Mondi, and Benvenuto to London's Little Venice. I'm James Richardson. You may recall me as the Italian football guy off the TV, or maybe not. The thing is, right now, there's a real tartan tint to Italian football, with four players all within the national team setup, following in the footsteps of legends like Dennis Law, Joe Jordan, Graham Sinesse, and Rose Riley. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the people putting the Mac into macaroni. Christy Grimshaw, Josh Joy, Lana Cleland, and Lewis Ferguson, all four of them flying the flag in style in Serie A. This is Forza Scotia. Four players in, in, in the top flight across the, the men's and women's game. <laughs> History, huge club, passion. That is the end goal, international football. I was like, you know what, let's just go for it. We're so passionate over here. Ferguson for Bologna. Moving beyond their comfort zone, both in terms of their football and, and general life. You can cut that, you can cut that. Ball action midfielder Lewis Ferguson is the new darling of the Bologna fans, who are just about getting over the departure of their former favourite, his fellow countryman Aaron Hickey. Ferguson in the City of the Two Towers is a long way from Hamilton, but he's thriving in his new surroundings and was very happy to show us around. Ciao ragazzi, uh, mi chiamo Lewis Ferguson. Io sono scozzese di Glasgow e io ho 23 anni. Io sono giocatore del Bologna e Scozia National. A beautiful ball, Ferguson, equaliser for Bologna, and Lewis Ferguson scores in back-to-back -back games. It just really excited me, moving moving to Italy and and playing in the Serie A, so yeah, I just I wanted to come out and, and try a, a different country, a different culture and, and see what it was like. My dad had a brief spell in Australia and it, it never worked out for him, but he always said to me that it was one of his biggest regrets that he never, he never went abroad to a different country and experienced something like that. So when he said that to me, it kind of stuck with me. When I was growing up, you just watch every game. I'm kind of still like that. I'll, I'll watch every game. Um, but yeah, like the guys that, that spring to mind are the likes of Pirlo and stuff. Guys that, that were at the at the top level. They're, they're so passionate over here. Um, and they love their football, but yeah, it's just a, a new experience and it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've never doubted myself, um, and when I made the move, you know, it is always in the back of your head, like what if it, what if it doesn't go as well as you plan, or, but you know, I thought moving over here, if it doesn't go as well, I can always move back, back home, I can always move back to the UK, but I'm so focused on trying to do well that, that that doesn't really come into my head now. Lewis Ferguson gets the goal. The Scotsman's first in Italian football. I got booked on the second last game, I think, of last season against St Johnston. Moved here in the summer. Started pre-season, was, was enjoying it, getting fit getting used to like, my new surroundings and stuff. And then one day the, the director of football came to me and says, you've, you've got a, a two game suspension. I had to just keep training, keep working hard, but it was difficult because when you start to do tactical stuff and shape and I was still involved in training, but when you know you're not going to play, it's, it's difficult. And when I came back in, obviously after the, the suspensions and stuff, um, I made my debut straight away and then after that I never played for, I think it was four games with a change of manager, which I think was a, a bit of a turning point for me because it was then a, a fresh start for everybody. 
I think it's fantastic to see so many Scottish players now taking that step and go, move, really beyond, moving beyond their comfort zone, both in terms of their football and, and general life. Obviously, Liam Henderson was a trailblazer for these guys. Um, he's been there for, for some time now. Uh, then we had Aaron Hickey, and, and now suddenly four, four players in, in, in the top flight across the, the men's and women's game. It's tremendous just to see them trying something new, but also succeeding as well, which uh, you know stands our game in good stead. Well, Lewis obviously went to, over to Bologna last summer. Another guy who you know had options to stay in Britain could easily have taken the perceived easy option by by doing that and maybe gone and sat on the bench of a Premiership team. But has gone over to Italy, put himself out there, exposed himself to say, look, I think I can I think I can cope and thrive at this level. And he's done that despite a, a difficult start. Just before the international break, the squads are sort of getting announced and. I had been involved for the, the full year before that with the, with the national team, but I was so used to, to playing every week. Um, and then this was the sort of first time in my career where I wasn't playing. The gaffer phoned me and with a good chat, he just explained that I wasn't going to be involved with the, with the squad which was disappointing at the time because I, want, I still want to go away with the team and you still want to represent your country. But, you know, the way he explained it to me, it, it made sense. He says there's no point in you coming away with us. We know what you're like, we know what you're capable of, we know what you can do. He says, but the, the new manager at your club maybe doesn't know what you're, you're capable of, so he just says work as hard as you can and, and you'll get in the team. You know, once he broke into the team, he, he very quickly showed his class and, and has stayed, has stayed in that team, scoring goals, creating goals, and, and become a bit of a fulcrum of, of the side. Um, so somebody who's really hit the ground running. My goal against um, Sassuolo is my my favourite so far over here. I was just desperate to get a goal because uh, my my family were over, my friends were over. When he set it back, I just thought I've, I've got to have a, a strike at goal here and I managed to just caress it into the, into the top corner, which was really nice. And it, it got voted goal of the month for Serie A online. So that no, was a, a really proud moment. Oh, good effort. Oh, very good. And that will deliver all three points for Bologna. I think it's a really good fit for, for Lewis and that they're, they're one of these teams that always seems to sit sort of just outside the maybe top six, certain traditional big guns, but are always there or thereabouts challenging. So if you're doing well there, you're always going to be in the eye line of these bigger clubs as well, as we've seen with um, you know Aaron Hickey going there, making such a success of the move, then gets another big move on the back of it. Yeah, I sort of knew myself that I had to um, go somewhere else before I made the leap to the Premier League. My head was a bit like, oh, this could go either way, but um, I thought, like, why not? It's, it's going to be a good experience. But at first, it did take me a while to like settle, to, like put it into my head, like this is actually an option for you to go to Italy. I used to just come home, like as I said, and play with my friends on PlayStation and stuff and uh, whatever. But then, as time went on, I started like just going to different places. Like even different cities like around Bologna just got in my car and went a drive for something to do, just something completely different. And it's found the net! The strike by Aaron Hickey! It's a goal out of nothing, but it's a great moment for a young player. It was nice to get the next goal in Serie A after um, Sunis, but uh, yeah, no, that was a really big moment for me and uh, that helped me to push on and get a few more. I was proud to just be being like um, someone from Scotland going and doing uh, something else in a different country, you know. Um, and I'm sure like a lot of people saw that I can do it and thought to themselves they can go and do it. So, yeah, no, I'm just proud for that reason. Pokes it through, first shot off the post, but it's in. Beautifully worked goal. And Aaron Hickey has his fifth of the campaign. We were away with Scotland at this point and um, Felga just came up and asked, like, um, well, told me his agent just texted him saying, Bologna are interested in him. And at that point, I didn't really think much. I was thinking, like, oh, like, really? Like, but then, um, yeah, no, he was just asking me, like, what's it like? Uh, 
like what's going on over there and stuff and I was just um, explaining to him what happens and he's another one that's done really well. Great, great. Um, can I go to you after the game? See, uh, only after the game, yeah, obviously, so yeah, no problem. See you next week. Bye bye. -bye. I'm happy here, do you know what I mean? I'm, I enjoy living here and I don't see myself moving back within the next couple of years anyway. In terms of living here or living in Hamilton, I would, um, I would definitely pick here. What's it like playing like San Siro in? The San Siro is the best I've played in. Like, Why? I'll, I don't know, there's just something different. I know I've played in at Celtic Park and Ibrox when it's full and they are amazing. Like the atmosphere and that's incredible. Played at Hamden when it's full. But there was I don't know, I, I don't know if it's because it's a foreign stadium and like a foreign atmosphere, it's different. Um and it's such an iconic stadium as well, it's just you don't realise how big it is until you're inside it, you know, you sort of, when you come through the big long tunnel <clears throat> and you come up like the steps onto the the pitch, it's like, it gives you that sort of wow factor. When we played Napoli away and stuff, see, driving to the stadium and all the fans were outside and they weren't saying very nice things about our bus, but the, it was just amazing. In the UK, you're kind of used to when you're getting beat, your fans kind of got on your back a wee bit during the game and you can feel the, the atmosphere changing, but for what I noticed to our fans here, like even in the games that we've been getting beat, they're, they're still like so supportive, still sing, still dead loud and yeah, they're, they're really good, they've taken to me really well, you know, when they come and when they want to speak to me and stuff, they try and speak English, which is, which is nice. Lewis is kind of really brings that physical edge to the game, he always has done, and again, it's something that they really appreciate there. We, we all know the old, old school roughhouse sort of Italian defenders and central midfielders, uh, and again, that's something that's still prized and talked about. So, yeah, I've seen that, that, that cited a lot in relation to Lewis City. You know, he's looking to win those duels, he puts himself about on the pitch, but you know, it has that bit of technical quality to back, up, to back it up as well. I heard about it obviously when I was away with Scotland. Went back up to Aberdeen and then I think it was within a week or so I'd been in Aberdeen. I get the call to say that everything was agreed and I literally just packed a case, said goodbye to everybody the next morning and uh, we come over together right at the start. We managed to, to get the apartment and, and move in and it kind of settled us, settled us down a wee bit. But obviously managed to get home for the birth of the lake on the, the 18th of November. Lauren's mum, my mum, um, I've been over all the time, they all want to, they want to see lake and give lake a cuddle, so um, they're over constant um, and it's helpful for Lauren as well. It gives her a wee sort of break because she's 24 hours a day with the, with the wee one, so in terms of getting recognised in the street, I don't know if it's just because I'm Scottish in Italy um, and I just look out of place, but I, I often see people kind of taking a second look at me. I've had a guy stop his motorbike. I thought I was going to get robbed or something. I was walking no far of the year and it stopped just in front of me and I thought, oh no, I'm going to, I'm going to get robbed or something here. And the guy just asked for a, a photo, which was nice. I think it's, it's normal in Italy for fans to, to turn up and have a conversation with the players with a poor start to the season. Um, and they just come to speak to you. It's a bit surreal. Like the experience was was crazy because I've never experienced anything like, like that. Um, so it's quite like sort of it's a conversation but it's quite confrontational. But no, that's just their culture, that's what's been happening in Italy for for years. After that conversation we, we managed to 
kickstart the season. We've, we've done well ever since. We're playing in the Serie A. I'm a better player than what I was six months ago. Taking that into the national team, if I can keep on improving and improving, um, hopefully the, the manager can see that and I can I can start to play as, as many minutes as I, as I possibly can. But I think the whole experience has helped me in terms of experience against players and improving my, my own game. Christy Grimshaw made the move from Stonehaven to Milan via Miami and Metz. Hmm. We caught up with the Scotland star to find out all about her life with the Rossoneri. Sono Christy Grimshaw, sono una giocatrice del Milan, eh, Scozia. What's happening? <laughs> Ciao! Come stai? Bene, bene, bene. Ciao, Luz. Ciao. How are you? I'm fine. Good, good, thank you. Greta! Come stai? Hey, Christy. Ah, io ho dormito bene, grazie. E tu? Ciao! 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 You working hard? Yeah. yeah. Good. 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 I'm sure we. You got I'm so glad you said that. That is so important. Thank you. Now I can spend the rest yeah, of my day happy. Ciao, Kri. I'm sorry. Back in the times of COVID, obviously, I was in France and. I remember actually I just, I'd just left France and obviously we weren't sure what was happening with the season or what was happening um, in the next year or what I wanted to do. I actually my agent messaged me just saying just so you know I think um, AC Milan are really interested and obviously just a few other teams in Italy and as soon as he said like I didn't even pay attention to the other teams in Italy it was AC Milan got my attention immediately and um, yeah, obviously I ran downstairs, told my mum and dad, <laughs> and they were just like, oh, AC Milan is pretty huge, actually, and I was like, yeah. When I hear um, AC Milan, obviously I think, like, history, huge club, passion, all, like, obviously positive associations come with the club, um, and my favourite colour is red, so it's a big thing there as well. Christy's obviously shown herself to be very open-minded throughout her career, you know, having studied and played in America and now going over to Italy with that same open-minded attitude to, to, to embrace everything that there is to offer both on and off the pitch there. Milan seemed to be a very progressive club when it comes to the women's side of their operation. Uh, Paolo Maldini, the, the, the legend there who now works behind the scenes, is, is very hands-on in, in terms of kind of creating opportunities and, and facilities for, for that team. And I think the game in general in Italy, the women's game, has undergone a massive transformation in the last decade or so. There were some fantastic crowds being um, being attracted to games. People yeah. seem to be really buying into it in a big way, which has in turn has created you know investment on, on the pitch, which has improved the level of product. So I think it's a really exciting place to have Scotland players playing again to, to then bring back that knowledge to, to the national team setup. up Tipo documentary. Sì, sì. Sulio, Lana, anche Lana. Lana, sì. The coolest thing I've done is probably sticking with Milan here, playing at San Siro. Definitely, I think that was um, where obviously the first, it was the first women's game that's been played there. And we know that the stadium's obviously not going to be there forever. So um, definitely a big game against Juve. Walking out onto that big, huge, like historic stadium. Feels like almost a dream because obviously the lights were so bright, you know. So that's the first thing I remember, obviously, um, when we're walking out as the team. At Milan, there's obviously you know a proud Scottish connection there with Joe Jordan, the, the squalo, the shark as they called him back in the day. Um, he was a, a massive fan's favourite, and hopefully Christy can follow in those footsteps and a kind of similar role on the park. They, they like their kind of you know people with a bit of an attacking ambition who really kind of put themselves about on the park, and uh, she certainly seems to live up to that bill. It's been a little bit difficult just for the past few months, obviously with injury um, for me. And when you are away from home, it is, it's, that does add a little bit more difficulty because obviously I've come here to play football. When you are injured, it's kind of like, okay, why, why are you here? Like then I'm having to come to train and obviously not do what I'm here to do, the sport I love. So it's kind of like, oh, if I was at home, maybe the situation would be a little bit easier um, with my family. My, friends and everything around but at the same time you just have to you know like get through it and like I said it just everything makes you stronger and you learn from everything and um, 
I've definitely grown a lot in every difficulty that I've faced, you know, with injury. Um, it's maybe why I'm like the strong person I am today, you know, like cliche again, but it's definitely true. There's been times where I've really, really wanted just to go home and, you know, like, especially when you go somewhere new initially um, and you're struggling to communicate and you're struggling to settle in, you know, and adapt. I can understand obviously why people are a little reluctant to leave their comfort zone or leave their country, but for me, um, now that I've done it, it's probably the best thing I've done. When I'm away for a national team and I come back and I'm extra Scottish, obviously. I, st I said thanks, but I said like, ta, like ta. And then some of, some of the girls were like, that's a weird thing to say, like what, what's ta? And now they've started saying ta. How cute is that? That's so cute. <laughs> I've got a sheet, I still saved on my phone actually, and obviously in the group chat, the team group chat, the first uh, thing that's sent in at the start of every season is the some things that help you, you know, like on the football pitch. When I'm around the Italian girls who are <laughs> complaining Italian or something, that's, and I, now I've started doing the gestures as well, obviously my hands, I need to keep my hands like this because <laughs> such an Italian thing. I am, like sometimes obviously in the, in the nicest way, I do swear a little bit in Italian actually, because I'm hearing it obviously from everyone else. When I do get a call up, obviously it's definitely extra, extra special because then I'm absolutely buzzing to hear Scottish accents again and the feeling never really wears off like when the first time I, you know, get the call from Pedro or um, I see my name on the list. Milan's a fantastically busy city, always something going on. I remember a line from that Arrigo Sacco book that I translated when he talked about it being the perfect place to introduce pressing and to, because that is the Milanese way of life. Everything's done at 100 miles an hour. People are always rushing about. And he said if, if you tried to do it in Rome where everyone's a wee bit more kind of manana manana, it wouldn't have had the same uh, effect. Coffee, 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 coffee. Ciao. Posso avere un espresso, per favore? Normale. E anche un ginseng. Piccolo o grande? Piccolo o grande? Grande, grande, per favore. Grazie. So growing up through my teens, I was a waitress in Stonehaven when I was like 14, 15, 16, all the way up until a year before I actually started playing professionally. And back then obviously I had no idea that I wanted to play professionally, it was just living the most normal life probably a teenager would live actually. <laughs> After I was graduating university in America, um, for the next few years I wanted to like see as much of the world as possible. I knew that I would be working for the rest of my life and like regardless of what I was doing, you know. I've got a degree in, a master's degree in like business administration, so whether it was like down that path or I never actually fully decided that I wanted to play professionally at all. Um, I just wanted to enjoy what I was doing. I always enjoyed the comfort of my own home, the comfort of my own bed, like even away trips, I hate, hated going on away trips, um, spending the whole day um, away from home. I just took a leap of faith and went to America and obviously I've not been home since then, so Football's definitely changed, like in confidence, like everything like that. Um, definitely changed my whole mindset. I can, after training every day, there's like a new place, a new coffee place that I want to explore and the city's huge, so there's so much I actually still haven't seen after three years. Um, so I really like that as well. My mum and dad, my family come over a lot. Friends from Scotland as well, they're actually coming over in April, so they, they take advantage as much as they can. And they're always telling me like, go to all these European cities so we can have free holidays. Yeah, all right, no problem. I would never have jumped out of my comfort zone to go and explore cities for long periods of time. Um, so having football that pushes me to do that, I've learned so much, you know, about myself and about all the places that I've been uh, through football, so yeah. Scotland loves a left back, and the latest of this prodigious production line is none other than the 20 year old Hellas Verona sensation Josh Doig. The former Hibs kid has adapted seamlessly to life with the big Doigs in Syria and is hoping to add to his recent senior call up. Io sono Josh Doig, vengo dalla Edinburgh, Scotia. Io ho 20 anni ai, io sono giocatore di Hellas Verona.
Aye, so we came over and uh, I done a medical and then the, the team were up in the Dolomites, like two hours away, up in the mountains at their training camp to go to every year. And uh, so the guy, my agent was kind of like, nah, you, you'll, you'll go home, you're not signed just now, like, don't worry about it. Because I was kind of all, all up in there, like, what's going on? I had not a clue what was going on. And then it was the last day, we had a flight that night. So we went into the, the headquarters, looked at the contract, it was amazing, I was like, nah, we'll, we'll sign it. So I signed it, expecting to go home, get my stuff and then come back over. Sit in, but then I signed it. And they literally were like, right, put me into a taxi, two hours up to the mountains, and then that was it. I was there for what, a week and a bit in the mountains, just whole new team, like new language, new new place. It was just like it was a shock it was a shock to the system, but I think that was the best thing for me to know, kinda dance around it, just go straight into it, take it head, head on. Josh Dykes had a, a tremendous start to life with, with Hellas Verona. I moved over there last summer, was I, immediately out of his comfort zone in the fact that he told me, you know, that he'd, he'd never been to Italy, never been really outside the family home. But again, another guy who went into it with exactly the right attitude, throwing himself into the challenge of learning a new language, new culture, the, the whole kind of uh, cultural side of, 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 of living and playing in a different country. I think when I, when I first came over here, it was football-wise, it was like, I was just expecting the biggest leap up in, uh, in standard and, and everything, but to be fair, I think Scottish football gets a bit of a bad name for you know the, the standard they play, but I think it doesn't deserve it because you know it wasn't it was it was a step up, but it wasn't the, the biggest step up ever. It was um, I feel like I adapted to it you know, fairly quickly, just getting up to the to the pace of training. I, my legs struggled a wee bit. I picked up a few niggles, but then my first start got um, I got an assist when I, I came on against Empoli. And then after that, I started against Sampdoria. That was like my first start at home, and uh, I also scored the that, scored the winner. And uh, it's, a, it's a dream start. You can't really get more than that. Uh, and that kind of that kind of started off. You know, the confidence boost that I just keep going. But uh, aye, that's definitely a, a special memory for myself. Keep that point. Brilliant pass and a chance for Doig. He scores, and Verona have turned it around. It's one of those and it just falls too perfectly. So we've got a panic in it, but it was, it was went in with my right foot as well. It was more just praying when I hit it. But then I also scored. And you'll probably know my mum and dad were in the stand that weekend as well. It was my dad's birthday. So in, in that corner, they were just sitting right in front of it. So I was just kind of, didn't even know what to do. I'd not scored in that long. So celebration was kind of out the window. It's more just kind of do what you want. Started this stuff right from the start on the pitch. Um, he, he had goals and assists in his first couple of outings. He's continued that form playing a little bit higher up than we used to see him in Scotland. He's more of a sort of left wing back than a left back. Um, and despite the fact they've had some flux with uh, coaches coming and going through the season, I think he's on his third manager now, um, he's remained a focal point of that team. Uh, and as we saw, was attracting a lot of interest in January. So, you know, clearly that hasn't gone unnoticed by, by some of the bigger, bigger clubs in Italy as well. Absolutely spot on. Here's another decent cross, Piccoli. Doig get the back post! It's a beautiful strike from Josh Doy. Josh has been brilliant, one of our best players this season, and instant fans' favourite. Fans love him. Um, they love Scottish players in general, um, but Josh is just a guy who has only got one direction. Really positive player, playing really offensively, scored a couple of goals, four or five assists as well. And something always happens, you know, when he gets the ball, there's there's a wee buzz about the place because he's just one of those kind of players. They call him Biondo, Blonde, um, and he's Brenno, that's what they call him as well, which is the train, because when he gets the ball, he just goes like a train. So he is, he is getting a bit of a cult uh, following. The fans have been good to me, yeah. The fans are like, they're all like family. It's such a small city, in a sense, it's like Edinburgh, like that. Like everyone kind of, everyone knows everyone. And uh, as I said, they're just obsessed with Verona. And also helpful and I you know getting nicknames and that. It's always it's always nice to hear and it's a confidence booster. If you hear people going to Italy, you're gonna to go to Rome, Milan, places like that, but I feel we've been to everywhere now. Like visited everywhere and we still say we we would stay nowhere except from Verona because it is just it's got everything. So I I think we've kinda of hit the jackpot a wee bit and, and getting Verona. Fans are like no other fans there. They're absolutely crazy, and the the curve of Sergio when they when they when they get going, it's it's unbelievable. I was I'd, I'd not actually like looked up much of the stadium and stuff, but I was just shocked at the size of it. And then when you're inside it, it's, it seems even bigger. I 
And obviously when, when Josh first came into the, 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 the Hibs team, it was in the, the Covid season with, with empty stadiums and to see the, the, the contrast now, you know, every week that Bentegodi is, is packed out, it's, you know, even when the team haven't been going particularly well, it's a really kind of passionate fan base, they stick behind their team. It's a great league, you know, I guess it's, you know, it has its ups and downs, but when you think about Juventus, Inter, Milan, and now it's like a golden age almost for Scottish players, there's four or five or six of them, all doing really well. You know, they're, they're demanding that, you know, we've, we've seen various incidents at training grounds and whatnot when, when they, they make perfectly clear when they're not happy. But um, certainly he, I think, four or five times already this season, they voted him their kind of player of the week. They have an award online that they, they kind of give to, even when they've lost, they, they recognise effort and, uh, and good individual performances. And he seems to be a regular on that list. The fans do just live and breathe football here. So you, know, you can you can sense it, and they sing from the first minute to the last minute. You know, win or lose, the fans are the fans are with you, and it, it does proper help you through it. That is the end goal. International football. That's you know, it's the, when you're at your peak of your ability, you know, you know you're there because you've been called up. So uh, I think I think you know everyone. Obviously, the, the Twitter ones just now. I've had a little taste getting that getting a call up. Um, so I, I absolutely love it. You know, it's, it's time away with, with boys that are like you, that you know, speak your language, that, which is different from me now. I first joined the squad, it was more like a fanboy for the first few days, eh? just being around the players and that. But um, obviously a few boys in the squad I knew, so that kind of settled me down a wee bit. But uh, I think that was a, a confidence booster that like, you know, I'm going in the right direction. You know, playing here is going to give me that, that opportunity to, to you know, kind of catch Steve Clark's eye. So obviously there's a lot a lot in front of me at the moment in the terms of left backs. I think I, I've kind of known that, but uh, I obviously got a long way to go. 20 year old moving away from home is a, a different story in itself, even if I was still in Edinburgh. Moving at your house, you know, not having your mum to do your washing and that, it's a, it's, a, it's a big step in itself. But I think we've kind of, we've kind of dealt with that in, the, in the, the harshest way possible by moving country altogether. So I think that, you know, as again, it's just going right in at the deep end and, you know, you just have to, you have to mature, and it definitely makes you mature. We're turning the TV to Italian TV, so we're not like, that's what the teachers say, you're not allowed to watch English TV anymore. So that'll be a, a hardship, but we need to learn it, it's a hard way. Molly being here, the girlfriend, uh, she obviously moved her whole life over here. And it's no easy for her, she had a job at home and that, but she's, um, ah, she's got into uni here, but you know, I think without her here, I'd probably go a bit mad, you know, being in the house myself all the time and that. So I think she's uh, she's been the glue of keeping it all together. The initial biggest challenge for us was the language. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was, it was daunting. Yeah. I was useless we really at any school. We come over and like really like immerse ourselves right. in it and like really try yeah. and like make a conscious effort to learn the language. We'll give it a taste, we'll give it a good go. Oh, we'll give it a good go. We're still, we're st it's going to one be or, like... One or two lessons a week. Like yeah. at Christmas, Josh had to make like a little speech at one of their like Christmas that, dinners. That was, that was and terrible. all the fans were like proper proud of him for trying it. They were... Trying, we need to try it. <laughs> nah, it was good. Your family is a big part of football and like having people around you in the stands like every week me and Josh's family were all there cheering him on I think that's definitely like such a nice feeling for him and a comfort knowing that we're always going to be here supporting him like the way he's supporting me and what I want to do as well. As soon as he went out to warm up like me and his mum and his dad were just welling up like I can't, I can't believe this is happening like and then he started he's went on and scored a goal like I was just in bawling my eyes out like I was just so so proud like always so so proud it's amazing. Football is a platform where you can play anywhere in the world, like absolutely anywhere. Um, and I think coming to Italy has just been what an experience. I'd be absolutely gutted if we didn't take this leap because it's it is, it is a leap to kind of come here and, and move your life over here. It's a proper leap, but I, I've never been happy. I would say that it's like it is a dream come true. Like Verona is the most beautiful place as well. So you know to say we to say we lived here, and when we're older we'll be able to say we lived in Verona. It's, it's a proper it's a special thing. 
Sassuolo's Lana Cleland has made Italy her home away from home. Sassuolo, the Nero Verdi, are her fourth Italian club after her move across from Edinburgh to Bari back in 2014. And now fully immersed in Italian culture, she can do her talking on and off the pitch. Ciao, sono Lana Cleland, vengo dal Perth in Scozia, sono una calciatrice del Sassuolo e della nazionale scozzese. Bravo! I think one of the most amazing things about Italy is you could go from north to south, east to west, and you'll find something completely different. I can't eat anything in these days. Oh, God. What is in here? This one can eat. Maybe it's not light. Maybe it's not light. Vai dai, un pezzo di questo. Facciamo questa. Vai. Basically the first interest in Italy came 2014 and an agent had got in contact or was trying to get in contact with me and then got in contact with my dad um, through social media and said that the, he had two teams and they were looking for a striker um, and he'd seen a couple of goals that I'd scored um, from YouTube and that's basically how it came about. It was just so off the cuff like I was like, do you know what, let's just go for it, let's try. The lifestyle was hard. I didn't understand a word anybody was saying. Um, nobody really spoke English either, but I thought, do you know what, if in six months time I decide let's go home, back to Scotland, enjoy my football there, but it'll give me an experience out with, as, as a football player, but also as a person, so, um, but let's go, try it, signed. I must have played 16 games and I scored 12, 13 goals. Um, I honestly, I loved it, straight away, loved it. So I thought I was only going to be here for six months, but it's ended up now me going into my ninth year. Um, I've played for Barry down in the south, then I played uh, three years also up north uh, for a team called Tavagnaco near Udine. Then I went back down south to, or central to Florence, played for Fiorentina, um, and now I'm on my next club in Sassuolo, uh, central of Italy. So. Well, Lana has been in Italy now since 2014, so the best part of a decade on her fourth club. Um, I think, you know, having spent so much time there and done so well, she considers herself as much Italian, almost as Scottish now. Um, and, you know, has built up a real reputation as a, a penalty box threat. She, she was the Serie A top goal scorer one year, following in the footsteps of one Rose Riley. Um, and, uh, you know, has continued that form wherever she's been. She's, she's always there or thereabouts in the goal scoring charts. Um, and again, somebody that I've spoken to in the past about, you know, adding, that it feels that she's added layers to her game technically and tactically by being exposed to that environment for so long. Caccia il Sassuolo, attenzione, c'è spazio adesso per Cleland. Sinistro di Cleland, gol del pareggio al minuto 42, non esulta. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, we put the ads, we missed, there's a lot of them, but um, baked beans, Heinz baked beans are really hard to come by in Italy, and you're actually paying for like a can about four euros, so. That's, sometimes back home that might be a, a, like an easy meal for some people, but for me it's a treat in Italy, so. So family are always watching, even my sister's not really into football, but since I've been away from home, it's a chance to watch me on telly, I think. So I've got two little nieces, one's just about 11 months old, and the other one is two and a half, and she's mad, um, loves me to pieces, and any chance to see Yaya on TV is what she calls me, so. She's been out a few times as well, um, seeing me on the pitch, and she's already been kicking a ball about, so fingers crossed for her as well. A lot of Italians don't even recognise me as a foreigner anymore. They just think I'm Italian because of how well I've got the language down to a T, so I've never had a lesson, um, which is probably one of my proudest moments, to be honest with you, to be able to speak the language the way that I do. Hey, shame on. <laughs> shame. Congrats. So, this is our home stadium. Um, in my opinion, it's the best pitch in the league. When we have bigger games against like Juventus or Milan, um, that full stand's full and also the stand behind us is full. Um, I think it's perfect for us. Um, it's not too big of a pitch, um, but you can see by the quality of the grasses. It's an unbelievable playing surface and the way we play football, um, always ball on the deck, um, sits us perfectly. I think my one of my favourite highlights from this pitch was probably my first game for Sassuolo. Um, it just happened to be against my old team Fiorentina and I scored the decisive goal, down in that goal, um, second half. So we won that game 2-1 for the first game of the season last year. Yeah, they'd actually just equalised um, and then the ball got played down the left wing and I just kind of held my run back post and then the ball got crossed 
I just cut back, took one touch, posting in. Did you celebrate? I did. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have. Um, got slated a bit after, but um, I just think the the moment uh, took it with me, and even the the coach ran on the pitch as well. So it was quite quite special. <laughs> Il Sassuolo è pronto a rispondere e il gol dell'ex punisce. Lana Cleland trova il gol del 2 a 1. Best stadium for me, I mean I've played in Allianz, yeah, Juventus, even if I'm a Fiorentina fan, so I really can't say that, but just the fact that it was a full capacity stadium, um, the noise when we walked out was just incredible. Um, yeah, just some of those moments you just you just keep with you forever, I guess. To cambiare lavoro? <laughs> so this is our training ground. This is our gym that we share with the men's reserves team. Um, the training ground's pretty new. It's only like three or four years old. Um, so it's quite an up-to-date complex, which is unbelievable for us as a team. Too long. <laughs> 12 minutes. <laughs> Cut. Yeah, so basically here at Swiss Swallow, um, the men's and the women's teams is quite um, together. Uh, there's basically a building and then the men are on one side and the women are on the other. Um, but we see each other quite frequently. Um, all the windows for the offices downstairs are like the, the men's coaching staff um, and they're always out on the pitch helping us or having a chat. So. Um, everyone knows each other here. It's quite a small place and quite a small club, so uh, the togetherness is really nice. Bravo. Andiamo. Ciao, arrivederci. On this side is all the men's pictures, so you can see they're spoiled for choice. I <laughs> uh, see. First of all, I got the deer because I really wanted a half leg tattoo. And I didn't want my mum to get angry, so I got out for her because she likes deers. <laughs> and then I just turned it into half leg Scotland with a wee Hamish. So obviously Christy Grimshaw uh, came to Italy a couple of years ago and I didn't actually know her before she came over. And um, it's been amazing since she's came to the national team as well. We've just got so close. Um, and I want to say we speak near enough every single day. So. Um, it's amazing having a bit of Scottish over in Italy with me, so even like weekends off and stuff we can meet up and hang out, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Relationships as well are hard to, hard to keep because you could be on the move every couple of years and to ask someone to follow you, especially financially for, for a female football player, it's not, it's not feasible, so I think those are the hardest things to come, to come by. And see when I've seen them just all kind of stick in the Like when I first came to Italy, like I hadn't even heard of Rose Riley and then I did an interview um, when I was in Barry, and one of the journalists, um, his dad had actually interviewed Rose Riley, so like he knew her. So when I came over as a Scot, he was like Rose Riley, Rose Riley, and I honestly felt embarrassed that I didn't even know anything about her. So from that moment, like I kind of started like trying to find out more about her, um, and I was shocked to know that her story was not out there. Um, so it's amazing to see in the last couple of years how how everyone now knows about her, rightly so, because of everything she's achieved. Um, and when I finally got to meet her at Scotland camp, when I won the Golden Boot in 2017-18, she actually congratulated me, um, which was pretty special because there's only ever been four foreigners in Italy to win the Golden Boot, um, two Scottish and two Danish, and I'm honestly honoured to have my name up beside her. So the year that I won the Golden Boot, uh, I played for Tavagnaco up in Udine, and the year that I won it, it was, it was quite a crazy year. To be fair, I had a lot of stuff going on personally. Um, I lost a really close friend of mine, um, and I was up near the top of the, the goal, top goal scorers throughout the season and then when I lost my friend I actually like basically stopped scoring um, it affected me personally so I basically needed like six goals to get the top goal scorer because that's kind of what we thought would make me win it in the last three games of the season I scored a hat-trick in each game uh, to, win, to win top goal scorer and honestly it just felt special because I felt like having lost my friend like I felt she was with me for that the last run of the, the season. No, so I actually see myself enjoying life in Italy after football. Um, personally, I fell in love with Florence while I was there, so I'm actually looking to buy a house um, when the moment's right there. Um, when I used to come back to Scotland at the start, I would get that butterfly feeling in my stomach. Um, I don't get it anymore. Obviously, I'm happy to come home and see family and friends, but um, that's the feeling I get when I go back down to Florence, even if it's just for a weekend. So. 
For me, Florence is now home. Every sport needs heroes and, you know, while we, also, we definitely need them locally and it's, you know, people need to be able to aspire to things that are on their doorstep, it's also great for them to, to, to be shown that it's possible to think a bit bigger and a bit wider. I think Scotland is seen by Serie A clubs as an increasingly attractive market. It's one where they perceive that they can get really good value for money for, for up-and-coming young players. And I think for the players themselves it's been important to, for them to understand that it, you know, it, it helps rather than hinders their national team ambitions. Josh got his first call-up by Steve Clark. Lewis is now an established part of that setup, and um, Lana and Christie have obviously you know, just gone from strength to strength in a national team context. So you know, if anything, it, it's adding value to what you're offering the national team coaches rather than being out of sight. Well, Caledonia and Calcio, it's a classic combination. Josh and Lewis, Lana and Chris are all clearly relishing their time over in Italy, which can only benefit Scotland's national teams. And with Scottish players currently so fashionable over there, it'll be fascinating to see who might be next to join them. But out from Forza Scotia, it's Arrivederci.